being live streamed, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from the break. We now will start off with the executive interviews and we have the first one scheduled for today, which is an interview with Collins Aerospace. Our guest is uh, Jonathan Modru, RFM Site Director, Propeller Systems at Collins Aerospace. Jonathan will share with us information about Collins Aerospace initiatives to facilitate the gender diversity in Africa and uh, focusing on the Collins Aerospace Morocco facility, which is based in Casablanca. Jonathan is leading the COE for cockpit and cabin line product, ensuring best in class customer performances, developing talented teams, and supporting aerospace ecosystem development. This session will be moderated by Ms. Fiona Omondi, who is the head of business development and projects at Tradewinds Aviation Services. Fiona Omondi is an enthusiastic woman in aviation, currently heading the business development at Tradewinds, and she is also the accountable manager for Tradewinds Training Services. She has sufficient experience in strategy, business development, and project management across aviation training organizations and ground handling. She is also the co-founder of Women in Aviation Kenya Chapter, a focused nonprofit organization working towards encouraging young women to take up careers in aviation industry in an effort to help bridge the gender equality and skills gap within the industry. Before we start the interview, before I give the floor to Fiona, allow me to play a video by Collins Aerospace. Collins Aerospace Redefining Futures, a lot of community work that uh, is being done to support youth and women development in aviation. I now uh, hand over to our moderator for the session, Fiona, for the discussion with uh, Collins. Fiona, over to you. You're on mute, Fiona. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Maureen. A very good afternoon to our distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to be moderating this session this afternoon. We just have 40 minutes together, but I would like you to get the most out of this session. I would need your help to do this, so kindly feel free to drop your comments and questions in the chat section. One of the key strategies arrived at during the first ICAO Gender Summit held in Cape Town, South Africa in 2018, towards bridging the gender gap 
was government and organizations to develop legislations and policies that eliminate discrimination between gender. We'll be looking at an initiative to facilitate the gender diversity in aviation in Africa and what the Collins Aerospace Morocco facility is doing to achieve this. This is a brief background about the Collins Aerospace, the Morocco facility. The Collins Aerospace is one of the major players in the aviation industry on the Africa continent. Present for many years in Africa, they provide complete aviation solution to aircraft manufacturers, integrators, airline, airports, and government. Collins strategy is to offer their customers solutions to connect Morocco and Africa countries to each other and the rest of the world to promote economic development. On the industry side, they see the growth potential of Africa that has encouraged Collins to increase its footprint. With about 110 employees, Collins Aerospace in Morocco is since 2011, the center of excellence for cockpit and cabin equipment, providing the best solution for mains commercial platforms. They are truly engaged in supporting women empowerment and thus Collins has local talent and great people promoting parity and supporting Collins to redefine aerospace. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to welcome our panelist, Mr. Jonathan Mudru, the RFM Site Director for Propeller Systems BU in Casablanca, Morocco. He is leading COE for cockpit and cabin line product, ensuring best in class customers performance, develop talent team and supporting aerospace ecosystem development. Previously, he served as executive assistant to the propeller system GM. During the four years, he had the position of key communications with corporate excellent funding responsibilities and strategic cost reduction initiatives. Prior to this, Mr. Mudru spent five years at the THSE Ops Manager for Atia Tijak, I hope I say that right, where he was executing production and material management, driving the continued expansion of lean manufacturing principles. He received his bachelor's degree in physical, in physical engineering from Polytechnic Clermont. A very warm welcome, Mr. Jonathan. Thank you, Shana, and uh, thank you for this uh, great uh, invite. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today and to talk more specifically about uh, gender diversity. Um, let's get right into it. How would you best describe Collins Aerospace? So uh, we've seen some um, example of what the video and uh, you really share about this, but let me come back to the overall big picture. Um, Collins Aerospace is a leader in technologically advanced and intelligent solutions um, for the global aerospace and defense industry. Um, we have about uh, 70,000 employees in the world and have uh, 19 billion in sales last year. Uh, but uh, more importantly for our customers, is that we have more than 15,000 engineers around the world who are focused on tackling the toughest challenge in our industry. Um, today, no aerospace company in the world delivers great or leading edge commercial aircraft and airport technology that enables the end to end passenger experience as does Collins Aerospace. Um, nose to tail, wing type to wing type, uh, and throughout the airport ecosystem. Collins employs its deeper and broader expertise to deliver engaged, customized solutions um, for our focus on passenger safety first, uh, but also comfort, uh, as also airport uh, operational efficiency and aircraft uh, availability, but not only, also maintainability and uh, sustainability. We will talk about this uh, later on. Um, Collins Aerospace is one of the major players in the aviation industry of the African continent. Uh, as you already say, uh, we are present for many years in Africa and we provide uh, complete aviation solutions to aircraft manufacturers, but also integrators, airlines, um, airports, and uh, governments. 
Mm, quite insightful. Now let's zero yes. in on your Morocco facility. How long have you been in Morocco? So um, it, we believe um, that, um, as I said, Africa is a tremendously exciting continent with a huge potential for aviation uh, industry growth. Um, as you know, uh, Africa is also the world's second largest and youngest population. And uh, with the increase of uh, urbanization and evolution of the middle class, the continent um, is um, positioned for transformational growth. Um, now, um, we had a presence in Morocco for more than a decade now. Uh, we launched our site in 2011. Um, proximity and uh, strong ties with uh, Europe, uh, French language, um, skills in place also uh, encourage us to develop our opportunities um, in this country. Um, in fact, we recently expanded our site in Casablanca to support production of uh, future programs with major customers in the coming years. Um, but overall, um, it's the growing potential of Africa uh, that has encouraged calling um, to increase its footprints. And it's why I'm so delighted to focus on this crucial part of the aviation world, um, where our expertise again, can help Africa reach its potential and multiple um, aviation domains. And as the demand for aerospace solution grows in the region, um, Collins Aerospace is positioned to participate uh, and leverage an innovative product uh, portfolio. Um, and in particularly in a post COVID environment, uh, we see strong demand to help passengers and airlines return to fly with uh, innovative contactless solution, for example. Um, so again, Collins uh, is committed to the success of uh, Africa's uh, aviation industry. Um, and our strategy uh, is really to offer our customer solutions, uh, as you mentioned earlier, to connect Morocco and African countries um, to each other and for sure to the rest of the world to promote uh, economic development. Now, um, coming back to our situation here in Morocco, um, with uh, 110 employees, uh, we are the center of excellence uh, for assembly and test on cockpit and cabin equipment. Um, what does it mean? Uh, we are manufacturing uh, safety products uh, used to pilot the aircraft, uh, such as the side stick, the throttle, the rotor pedals, so everything but basically the pilot can, can touch. And uh, we are performing it for uh, main commercial platforms with Airbus, Boeing, Bombardier, Dassault, and also tomorrow, Comac and Yakut. Um, we focus on providing solutions um, that make operation first safer, uh, more efficient, uh, but also more connected. Um, and we are continually increasing our presence uh, across the region uh, through ongoing investment. Um, as just said, we recently expanded our site in Casablanca uh, to support production of future uh, programs with major customers, um, but also developing new solutions and uh, adapt uh, to reality for now. Uh, and we are launching, launching uh, MRO shop uh, so basically to support in the airlines in terms of uh, maintenance uh, and repair. Mm, thank you. Now, coming back to the topic of the group and about uh, how gender seems to be, gender equality seems to be very important to your organization. Um, is gender equality part of the HR policy from the beginning? As I said, we are a presence in Marco for more than a decade and gender equity is part of our HR policy since the beginning. Uh, we are very proud to participate in the development of African aerospace industry uh, for our site in Casablanca, but not only. Um, we are truly engaged in uh, supporting women empowerment with actual best in class results uh, for all our professional categories, uh, noticing almost parity between men and women uh, let me give you some numbers here concerning our, our site in Casablanca. 
percent of our workforce are women. Uh, Forty percent of our middle management um, team are women, and fifty percent of our top management and engineers are women. Um, basically, uh, it's uh, almost perfect parity. Uh, we still have some minor gap to close, uh, but we are very proud of these numbers. And uh, most of all, uh, we support the local growing space industry. And since the beginning, uh, we train talent uh, and we have really great people uh, supporting Collins uh, through Define Aerospace. Typically, uh, Collins' commitment to inclusion um, continues with programming and benefits that support our workforce. Um, and as necessary, we can include a modified work schedule if you need to adapt, um, giving opportunity for the, what we call the power of choice. Um, which is a leadership development program for our women employees. Uh, we participate uh, into uh, a different uh, diversity conference, and I will come back also to, to this one. Uh, we have the Empower program for individuals uh, interested in returning to work after a uh, career break. So we, we take into account, uh, I would say, the real life uh, uh, as everybody uh, is having right now. And we also have program to enable the successful the development and the advancement and retention of women at all levels of the organization. Um, we have different programming like mentorship, networking, uh, leadership development seminars. Uh, we have women listening month, um, political, we have women advancement and acceleration program. Um, in fact, we are used to say that we are all welcome, uh, all equal, and all in. Now, Mr. Jonathan, that is very insightful and congratulations to that. Having 50-50 already attained by 2021, it's, it's quite remarkable. Now, um, according to a research by Harvard Business School, hiring more women has a positive impact on your bottom line. Um, can you see, this is true with the organization or what has gender diversity brought to your business? Yeah, and yeah, this is a very important uh, question. And uh, uh, let me give you some example here. Um, Collins Aerospace believes, uh, again, that Africa is an exciting continent with a huge potential. And today, our uh, um, continuous improvement in organization uh, associated to a highly qualified workforce are two top um, contributors for being able to maintain best in class performance uh, year over year. And typically the diversity uh, support our experience with above average profitability driving the business. Um, thanks to diversity, we've built a unique site and a tremendous team um, develop the best operation performances. Uh, just to give you examples, uh, for several years now, uh, with all of our large of customers, we've been able to maintain a 100% on-time delivery, uh, no escape to customer. Uh, we have been awarded by Airbus best performer in 2015 and 2017, thanks to all our team. Um, we also actively uh, support university. Um, we have the chance to have a local institute like uh, IMA, which is the Institute for Aerospace. We are an historical partner. Uh, and uh, since almost a decade now, uh, IMA exists. They've been able to train more than 10,000 people uh, from operators to middle management people we have also over partnership with an university like Ismala, uh, which is dedicated to services and repair. As I said, we are going to launch an MRO shop, so we are very um, connected. And uh, overall, this developed training and qualification for the local workforce, uh, but also um, through the growth of our local supply chain. Um, our goal is 
to have also an overall um, ecosystem uh, growing with us and having the right people. And now we are going outside uh, to us additional uh, manufacturing, as I said, we need first perform an extension. Um, so in constant collaboration uh, with this organization, uh, with the Ministry of Industry, with the GMAS, which is our aerospace association, we confirm all this tight relation and cultural fit uh, between Morocco uh, and Europe and uh, USA, as we are part of uh, American company. Uh, so basically, uh, I would say that diversity is really our strength. Women continue to make a uh, significant stride in aviation. Uh, and uh, as I heard earlier in another conference, inspire new generation of leaders. Uh, we have to take care of this. Uh, this is essential and this is the essence of being a leader is by uh, exhibiting accountability, empathy, integrity, uh, but also uh, respectfulness. Uh, even when things are challenging and we know uh, we've been uh, uh, faced to very hard situation uh, in the last couple of months. And as we want to celebrate uh, women leaders, uh, we are proud of uh, having women uh, change makers uh, that lead the industry. Uh, we can together, uh, we can all help uh, create a more inclusive world. Mm quite encouraging listening to you. And um, at this rate, and with such leaders like you, we will attain the, the SD, SDJ that talks about gender diversity. Um, you have talked about the initiatives you are taking towards attaining, um, attracting women in the industry. Would you kindly share the measures or policies you have put in place to retain the women in the industry? especially when it comes to work and life balance, because normally we see that um, the women join the industry with so much enthusiasm and during their career, it's time to maybe start a family. And at this point is when we notice that we start losing the women in the aviation industry. So kindly share the policies or measures you put in place to bring back the women on board and to ensure that they develop in their career. Yeah, and, and also, yeah, thanks for, for this element because um, I may need to come back to some element uh, earlier, share on a different program we have um, and the benefit to support uh, this uh, situation uh, when needed. Um, we have program uh, including, uh, as I said, modified work schedule. Um, we can uh, also have program, empower program, women, and also, um, supporting after uh, returning to work after a, sorry, a longer uh, career break. Uh, and this typically kind of element we can have. Now, uh, for us here in uh, Morocco, again, we have um, uh, seen uh, the African the Africa success on the world aviation scene. And we think that the conditions now are right to take a new step. And we are committed to this achievement. And we are convinced that uh, we have uh, the right team uh, that can make this uh, vision uh, a reality. Uh, so all we need to be is uh, uh, convinced uh, that uh, diversity is a benefit and that there is no um, obstacle uh, high enough to stop you achieving this goal, basically. Um, uh, if I can just take an example for colleagues, um, we are an advocate of what we call the paradigm for parity, uh, a movement that uh, reflects the business commitment to addressing the corporate leadership gender gap. And this is still a reality, uh, to be uh, crystal clear. And the goal is to achieve uh, full gender par parity by 2030, with a near-term goal of women holding uh, at least 40% of senior roles. Um, we built uh, our strategy on aerospace redefined uh, by developing solutions uh, 
uh, with the aviation industry. Uh, and just uh, to be uh, in line with uh, what is going on, uh, we want to decarbonize uh, and be more sustainable. And for calling in Morocco, uh, this requires strong integration uh, rate with 40% of parts made in Morocco. And we are also uh, transitioning to new uh, energy. Um, and with just this example, I just want to send, um, I would say an optimist message to the new generation saying that today um, we are experiencing an extraordinary technological transformation in aircraft manufacturing. Uh, this represents a tremendous opportunity for our future. Uh, we are talking about uh, zero emission green aircraft by 2045, 2050. Uh, and that means for us uh, tomorrow uh, because of our industry cycle. And the challenge of designing new generation of aircraft, um, it happens to the every 30 or 40 years. So we are in a very exciting moment uh, for aerospace and we have space for everybody, uh, men and women. Uh, so can come and join us. Let's be stronger together. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, that makes me want to join the team. Um, um, it's quite quite interesting that you even have modified work programs to bring back women who've been out for a long break and really appreciate you for that. Now, do you have meet any cultural obstacles in the company or in your hiring process? So, uh, as shared, we, we are committed to uh, achieve parity uh, for all of our company role. And for that, we work together, uh, we tackle big challenges, and mostly we keep our word. And on that, advancing diversity, um, equity, and inclusion is both a business and social uh, imperative. Uh, one key to um, transforming our work culture and building more understanding and inclusive uh, workforce is having frank uh, and open discussion about equity as diversity and inclusion also. Um, you know, when I say uh, stronger together, uh, it's not just a, a hashtag, um, it's a call to action. Um, it's called us to be our best and to stand together, valuing each person for their unique talent, skill, and perspective. Um, together, we can accomplish what no other company can, and this is what Collins believes in. So, what can we do? Uh, we need to educate ourselves, um, seek to understand, share openly and transparently, uh, but also uh, attentively listen and learn. Um, when we did speak up, uh, make it personal, and most of all, be engaged. Uh, this is where we believe a multitude of uh, approaches and ideas enable us to deliver the, the best result for our workforce, but also for our workplace and uh, our customers. And uh, we are committed to fostering a culture where all employees can share their passion, their ideas, so we can, again, back, can tackle uh, the toughest challenges in our industry and path a new way to limitless possibilities. Um, so uh, on that point, I would say that diversity drives innovation, uh, equity eliminates obstacles, and uh, that uh, inclusion drives success. Wow, very powerful. Now, Having a look at your video that we just saw, um, are you involved in your local communities to develop gender equality and promote STEM? Kindly tell us more about this. Yeah, this is, this is a very important element for us. Um, we are implementing meaningful and uh, uh, measurable initiatives across our global workforce uh, with our partners uh, and our communities. To, to serve uh, and create a better uh, and more equal world. Um, 
we drive action as um, public communication uh, at university, like IMA that I've talked about earlier, and, uh, and uh, championing equality for all. Uh, we promote diversity, uh, cultivating the culture of inclusion and innovation. Um, we have women innovators. Uh, as I said, we have 50% of engineers who are women um, serving as leaders and uh, that are uh, inspiration for next generation. So they are totally part of our uh, public communication uh, at university, for example. Um, also fostering deep and strategic partnership to expand uh, our ability to attract, uh, develop and engage uh, a, a diverse pool of talent. Um, and diversity overall, we drive innovation uh, as we say that we believe that um, creating a, an environment where all employees can be themselves and share their ideas openly uh, is what we all need. Uh, coming back to your point on STEM, um, Collins uh, attends what we call the uh, annual uh, Society of Women and Journalists Conference uh, and uh, partners with school clubs uh, across uh, many countries. Uh, for example, um, we have we had a, a, an event where many girls uh, from around the globe joined us virtually, by speaking for sure, to explore careers in engineering as colleagues uh, hosted this uh, 20 years of introduce a girl to engineering day. This is the main event for us, and we've been able to support it. Um, just to give you some numbers, uh, you know, only 20% of bachelor degrees in engineering are awarded to women, uh, and with only 6% to women of color. Um, at Collins Aerospace, we are hoping to change those statistics uh, by helping girls uh, to develop an interest in STEM uh, and stay interested throughout their lives. And so, Girls learn about the innovation process and brainstorm new ideas in an online workshop. Uh, believe me, it was a very exciting event. Uh, we are also hoping um, events like this will help close the engineering gender gap. Uh, by this, I mean build a, a pipeline of future female leaders across the industry uh, and further our commitment to gender parity and uh, equity, because no matter how transforming our technology are today, um, really our future depends on our ability to develop the next generation of innovators uh, in aerospace. So that's why we are redefining aerospace. Oh, that's, uh, that's really helpful. And uh, we are happy that you're very much involved in STEM and bringing the young generation, they say it's good to catch them while they're still young. So what kind of advice or best practice would you give on how we could further develop gender equality or get to where you have come? Yeah. Um, so maybe let me summarize the, the, the three steps uh, uh, we have. Um, first, we need to uh, inspire our youth. Uh, second, we need to invest in our workforce. And three, we need to strengthen our communities. No matter scale and resource, uh, we all know that we have this uh, ability, but most of all responsibility uh, to, to, to make an enduring impact on uh, generations. Uh, I hope you've been able to see that um, Collins invested in Africa, uh, we succeed uh, and we keep investing. Uh, and our site uh, is keeping uh, delivering uh, with all of this uh, great team we have, uh, which is uh, again, stronger together uh, and to I would say maybe conclude on this. Um, uh, let's say that uh, there is no space more diverse than uh, aerospace. 
Thank you. We are just about to, out of time, and I want to thank you, Jonathan, for sharing your insights on this topic. Um, it's good for us to take away that um, it's important for organizations to come up with policies that uh, favor this gender diversity. And um, it's also important to note that partnership with schools and education facilities will help tap the, the catch up with, it will help us get the young children while they're still in school. And um, it's a very good point that I picked up from you is when you say that you are a leader and you're accountable and you're driving this gender, gender goal. So I'd like to thank you for that and for being a champion of gender diversity. I want to thank the organizers of this conference, Afra, who invited me to moderate and to all of you for taking part in this very important discussion. Over to you, Maureen. Thank you very much, Fiona, for moderating the session. And um, thank you to our guest, Jonathan Modru, for your participation and uh, sharing with us more details about uh, Collins Aerospace Morocco facility and uh, all these um, initiatives that uh, are being spearheaded by the facility. A big uh, uh, round of applause to and uh, commend, commending, commandment to Collins Aerospace for um, doing all these community initiatives. And we still have more lined up about Collins Aerospace initiatives. Uh, we have um, uh, another panel discussion, and we also have um, the Bet She Can initiative that are lined up for tomorrow's sessions. And uh, this brings us to the close of the executive interview. Uh, we will have the session uh, streaming available on the conferencing app. So if you missed the, uh, any section of this interview, please feel free to go back to the attendee uh, platform and click on the session. It will be left open, uh, accessible for the next two weeks. We will have uh, our next session coming up, another executive interview. Very exciting session um, with Rwanda Air CEO, Miss Yvonne Makolo, who will talk to us about her aviation journey, giving us insights on resilience uh, through the years of experience in her various leadership roles and specifically on aviation. Please join us for that session in the next couple of minutes. Go to the attendee platform and click on the executive interview with Rwanda Air CEO. See you on the other side. Bye-bye.